Mary Healy. I live at 110 Hollywood Drive in Fort Thomas. And I found the budget very interesting. I did not know it was going to be presented tonight. But it has, I have comments about the budget, and I may have comments later, but we're only talking about the budget right now. My comments are that I hope that there were bonds for the approval of the Central Business District in the Midway. Living in the South End, I do not see where the city is developing any services, expenses to the Southern End. Driving here this evening, I passed uh, the former IGA site. There are unsightly benches there, beginning with where the Victory Savings and Loan is. There are beautiful broad arm benches throughout uh, that drive through beyond the Central Business District. There are beautiful containers with broad arm. The South End has seen none of it. As far as I know, we have seen no um, landscaping by the city. And I am aware also that the city owns and purchased some private property. As far as I know, it owns no property in the southern end. Corridor, we have no parks, such as the parks that were associated in um, uh, the Highland and Grand Avenues, the um, Memorial Parkway, and North Fort Thomas Avenues. And I'd like to know when the city is going to um, exhibit some of its interest and counsel in the southern end to approve this. Because I heard you end with that this is a city where we should all be proud. If the council would drive in the southern end, it has deteriorated. It has not improved. So those are my questions and comments about the budget. Is, are there going to be any funds earmarked to the southern end? As far as I know, there have not been any, and I welcome the council to inform me to Awesome. Thank you for your comments. I appreciate that very much. I can tell you the visioning process is looking at the entire city. And frankly, I don't know a lot of what's coming out of that because each council member was assigned to one of the six different uh, areas that we're investigating in the visioning process. And we have a public hearing scheduled for June 25th. I think it's last month. And at 7 o'clock the mess hall. So that might be a good meeting to attend because hopefully some things may come out of that visioning process. Mayor, yeah, I've actually volunteered and served on the zoning committee of that division process. Oh, great. And practically all those meetings are geared towards the central business district in the midway. There are times I have brought up the southern end.
walking and, and tours and those types of things. And so um, there's a lot of conversation that's in the pathway that could go all the way from NKU down to Newport would be awesome and streetscape improvements all the way through that corridor. So there's a lot of opportunity for us to do all kinds of things. Um, I don't feel that there's been any intentional uh, uh, intention of not doing anything specific. It's looking for ideas. So if you have ideas or comments like the benches, that's a good idea. I don't I think those benches are probably actually the, by the, the benches <laughs> The benches were purchased um, and placed by design in the CPD district, so the Midway and right here in the center of town. And then throughout the remainder, and mostly along the spine of North South Fort Thomas Avenue, um, there, and all of them are sponsored benches. So anybody can pick a location along there and say, I'd like to sponsor a bench. So that's really how they've evolved, is people sponsor them, and then they're purchased in place. Well, I would encourage the people who are in charge of the bench benches to sway people towards the south end, because there are benches that are two or three adjacent to each other, where I wonder how often they're used compared to the southern end, where there is a bus stop, and people could really make use of the benches. So again, I, I just believe that the southern end is not on the forefront of uh, council to uh, make the city better for the entire community. When, with the uh, rebuilding of the schools, obviously that made a big difference um, down there with uh, the school and the, the park right next to it, the, the um, baseball, Winkler. the Winkler Field. We've done a lot of improvements there and there's still more improvements. I don't know if you I don't know that I would consider those an improvement. That was beautiful playing uh, green space. Now we have um, metal sheds that you can see from Pike 27. You have um, uh, public restrooms, the, the backs of which face 27. So I don't know that everyone would consider that. And I assume it's really not a public park. It is where the high school goes to play baseball. So it's really not benefiting the southern end. And I. Again, aesthetics are in the eyes of the beholder. But uh, looking at metal sheds and restrooms that face Pike 27, I personally do not. I would question whether everyone thinks that is an improvement. Well, I would. I would respectfully disagree that it's only for the high school because if you go there right now, there's teams playing that have nothing to do with the high school. They schedule them through me today, so there are residents playing on those fields, and they do. The users of those fields demand restrooms, and I, I don't think if you drove by there, you would say that that's a restroom door. I would, but anyway. Um, well, so your, your point is well taken. I, I totally understand where you're coming from, but. You know, and I don't even know what you consider the southern end, where the southern end starts and the northern end starts. I don't, I've never looked at the city that way. I've always looked at it as the, the city as a whole. And we have done things in all portions of the city. And, and like Ron mentioned, a lot of it's based on people who, like yourselves, who are concerned about 
a region and, and want to see something happen and they, they step forward and donate money to create a little pocket park or set out benches or trash cans or whatever and, and all that can come out through this visioning process and especially this, this, um, this connectivity with the other cities on 27, I think that's got some really good potential and obvious and, and actually there's some funding available that we may be able to attach on to to help make this happen and we've got all the cities working together, we've got NKU involved, St. E's involved, there's a lot of folks that have been meeting regularly just recently to um, try to get involved in this. It's a big nationwide push to create these connected pathways between different areas. So I think there's some real potential there. And, um, you know, we're very open for suggestions. If you have ideas on where things, you mentioned two pieces of property, we can certainly look and see what they are and if they could, um, something could be done with. I know there's a beautiful cemetery down at that end of the of 27 as well. And I know we talked about the cemetery on 27. Um, Evergreen. Yeah, Evergreen that of of doing tours and doing things like that and there's groups that are interested in and and evidently that's a big thing now across the country where people are personally i i don't get that myself but um it's an opportunity to bring people into the area and to spruce the the, the area up and, and uh, so we can certainly look at any opportunities like that and if you have other Folks that live in the South End that have ideas, certainly share them with us, absolutely. We'd love to look at, at what potential changes we can make. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council. Appreciate it. Would anybody else like to address Council? Hello, Eric. How are you? Um, I'm again from Hollywood Drive, too. Rick Wagner, 67 Hollywood. And I don't know if this is the right time to do this, because you said this is more budget. But I feel the same way she does. I live half my life in the North End. Mm -hmm. And when we move to the South End, it's a different world. I don't even know if I feel safe living on Hollywood right now. First off, Mark's here. With parking on both sides of that street and all those apartment buildings with no parking for their residents, I was always told they had to have so many that all the residents had to have a place on off street. We had them all the way down Hollywood almost all the time. And then we also have the office building, the, the old IGA and AM Albers from go back way back. Yeah. Um, they can't park all their people. They're parking that on the street. Mm -hmm. I talked to Melissa today, and um, all weekend we couldn't get in out of our driveway because they were parked within a foot of it. Mm -hmm. One suburban from Florida and another Buick from Ohio. And when we try to get out of our drive with a van, and there's trucks parked on the other side, as well as our side. Mark, is it safe on Hollywood to get a fire truck down there with trucks and stuff on both sides? Well, I mean, it obviously makes it tighter for us. I mean, we do get up and down the street. We make a lot, you know, number of runs there, mainly EMS, but we make, obviously made some fire runs. And mm -hmm. obviously when it's parking on both sides, it makes it a little tighter for the apparatus to get up and down. But well, that's, I mean, we, these are the we, concerns I mean, just, we have. North End, nothing like this we was, deal with. you know, really went on. It seems like everything down here, it's just like we're, people don't even know where it is. <laughs> it's just like a lost end of the town. Yeah. Um, you know, I got it. I had gotten a ticket, a warning ticket, parked on the North End in my Chevy van because it hit a logo on the side. Okay? Yeah. And then later I found out it was only a half ton and, you know, there's a, Ken Nyer, huge van, one of those, you know, the big box types of thing. It parks on the street all the time. Okay. You know, it's, and it's all, you know, the apartments. Um, Russ of Saggy was going to come up with me tonight, but he's looking for vacation, but that's yeah. beside the point. But behind the, the last two apartments on the right, you guys need to go down there and see what's behind those. Every time they had a washer or dryer come up, it just got rolled over the hill. No way. No, you ought to see it down there. It's ridiculous. Um, he just, you know, someone threw a tire out and it's down in Russ's backyard right now. They just roll it down the hill. And that's, that's what we go through. Now, I did talk to Melissa. I don't know if the city does it or can I paint like so much? I think you said two feet. Which I don't even think that's enough, but two feet's better than parked right up to the edge of your driveway. Yeah. When you're trying to get out 
and you got a truck sitting across the street. Well, that's certainly something the police department can look into and, and patrol. And I know there have been issues in the past. I don't, I don't know if you brought them to our oh, attention a couple of years have. ago. Or, well, two years yeah. ago when, when in Halloween, it was around Halloween, and they cleaned out one of the apartment buildings. And they covered the whole front yard, one end to the other, That's what the whole sidewalk, yeah. and the whole yeah. parking lane on that side. Yeah. And it sat there for several weeks, wow. including Halloween. So all my, I don't have kids, I ate, my grandkids were there. And they had to walk all the way out to the middle of the street to get around mm -hmm. the garbage. Okay. And would you allow, the, would that happen in your neck of the woods? Well, it, no, I, I totally get your frustration, but, uh, very much so. And, and But sharing that information with us is very helpful. We can have police look at it, we can have code enforcement go down there. And I can tell you that we, we are, in fact, we've got a whole list of ordinances we're going through tonight because we're making changes to our code enforcement to give us a little bit more authority to take care of some of these issues. So hopefully, you know, that will give us a little bit more power to make things happen sooner. Okay. At least that's what we're hoping for. Is there a law in the city that they have to provide parking for their residents in these apartment complexes? Well, part of the zoning, yeah, that, I, I don't know, I assume that occurred prior to parking requirements for apartments. Are you aware of any of that? I mean, if it were built today, certainly they're standard. I don't know yeah. the edge of those buildings, but I mean, I don't know what applied that. I've, I've been here 32 years. They were here when I got here. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what the standard was. Well, Mr. Van he's always so, telling me, he says, we weren't even told that they were going to start this. Yeah. He was the original person yeah. there. Yeah. And he says, they never even told us. They just built them and never asked the residents with all the houses. <coughs> and, and, you know. And that's why we make changes to the zoning to try to, try to prevent something like that from occurring. So at this point, we, you know, a lot of that stuff is grandfathered in, but we do have the opportunity with other zoning ordinances to look at it, and also the police department to look at parking issues or whatever else we can do to, to try to minimize the... And especially when there's all these these vehicles, you have no idea where they're really at. You yeah. know, like I said, this thing, this suburban was from Florida, and it never moved all weekend. Yeah, and it was that far from my driveway. Yeah. Is KLH and the trucking company are there at their capacity now, where they literally don't have enough spaces in their lot and they're overflowing? You know, yeah. RLH or whatever the KLH. Or, no, well, no, there's KLH, but then there's a R something logistics. It's a trucking Lowe's or. Oh, it, I don't think the old Frisch's. Uh, yeah, yeah, the old Frisch's in the old IGA building. It, well, the Frisch's those were that they uh, got all the trucks and trailers for rent. Okay, and that's Bob Miles. And they don't look like they're over. It doesn't look yeah, very but nice, but you know, it was overflow from that IGA parking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're. They could park all the way down the street a lot of times. Wow. And I heard they're even renting from the old Long John Silver's the salon over there. They're even getting spots from them because they don't have enough spot. You know, places. Wow. So it's, well, you know. It's good for business, but bad for you all. So yeah. we need to look into it. I, I, now I look back, now I figured out why we got a good deal on that house because nobody else wanted it. <laughs> it's, yeah. you know, I would tell Melissa, I. If it keeps like this, I'm almost tempted to just rent it out and move somewhere else mm -hmm. and get out of the town. Because no, it's just, I'm sorry, that's it's a situation. just, just it's yeah. between the garbage and then the other thing is, you know, I see you know it. The they ought to have at least make them have dumpsters at each one of those buildings. Mm -hmm. They have them put these plastic bags out every morning, and then you know. By tomorrow, when I leave for work, all this garbage will be all over the street and down in our yard because they don't, they don't have dumpsters. They just throw whatever they want out by the street. There are, is there an ordinance about putting trash out in bags versus in a... Well, well they have to be in a container. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we have a requirement of dumpster versus individual container. But if somebody's putting out bags, we should bags, cite them yeah, for that. Yeah, they, they would have to be in a pool container. Okay. When's trash pick up there? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Be a good night to go down and see tonight. Of course, there's a lot of people on vacation too. Everybody seems like they went on vacation. Went to work today and didn't have any traffic on 471 at all this morning. It was blue there. Yeah. I grew up in 72 Hollywoods as a kid. Okay. And wasn't that way then? <laughs> no. Yeah. Were the apartments all there then? They uh, they existed. Did yeah. they? Yeah. Well, I heard the one, but I, I think they changed. Well, yeah, the, the one is known as a slumlord wherever he has stuff, and it's just garbage. 
and the people, you know, it's it's terrible, and it's you know, you don't even feel. I won't even take the kids, my grandkids, for a walk that far up. I won't walk up there because you never know what you're going to find and see on the street and on the sidewalk. Well, we can certainly have code enforcement and the police department look into this and see if there's a way we can at least try to minimize the. the <coughs> negative and if you get a chance, you ought to take and walk down between and look down in the woods behind. It, it, it's Definitely. a little more covered now, but all winter you should have seen it. Okay. So, so it's, there's all the junk still there. It's just there's oh, yeah. weeds are hiding. In yeah, there. The, the leaves are on the trees and the weeds are growing up, so you don't see it as much now. Okay. And, and what's, then, what's the address on that house that you're talking about? That's on a house. That's um, the. If you come in on Hollywood, there's like four off uh, apartment buildings. It's the last two, on the and right. they kind of on the right. They kind of face each other, and there's a supposed to be parking in between, but it's just it's all junk. <laughs> So, and it's, uh, like I said, it's behind those. Because right. Mr. Vanderpool is the first house on the right after that, and then Russ Saggy is the next one. And you go back in their backyards and you have to see them. It's just, you know, all winter. It looked just, you wouldn't want it. You'd think we we're, you know, over and over the Rhine or something, you know? So. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've gone through it for the last two years, and it's, you know, this just got really bad this weekend. I, I'm glad you brought it to our attention so we can do something about it. Okay. Because that's, yeah. That's yeah, I didn't tough. know if you wanted a council meeting, but when you brought part of it, we got it started. I thought, you know. Yeah, you're supposed to talk about budget, so say something about the budget. <laughs> can you budget for, uh, <laughs> for some parking for our end of the town? Okay, see, that was budget. Okay, we're good. Can you budget we're for good. parking only on one side, there too, maybe, and put a parking the garage apartment. at the corner? And that way there we, we can go. There you get, go, Rick. Yeah. You know, but to get up and down the street, it is. Well, and we'll probably have a conversation with Bob Heil, too, about his business and his need for parking and what his situation is and see if, if we can figure it out. Is there an opportunity across the street behind the salon? Isn't there a vacant lot there that. They're already using that is They're the using that is already the parking. They're, 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 that's, not, that's not owned by the salon. That's a different owner, but that, they've used that for parking. I mean, that, that was already a parking lot. But isn't lot. there a section that's not paved? No, it's, it's all, is it all it's the old parking lot. I don't know if yeah. there's any back farther over. <clears throat> I think so. Behind, so it was, who even owns it's the that. back part of the lot from when it was a Long John Silver. So it's, <coughs> it's subdivided and it's a different owner mm. in that slot. But we will definitely look one. into it though. Okay. And then, like, like I said, what is it? You know, you allowed to park these great big sprinter trucks on the road like that? You, have you been down Hollywood? Yeah, I've been to Hollywood oh, a few times in my career. I've been yeah. <laughs> the number one, yeah. you've had 40 or something, wasn't that the number one? It's 44 and 48. 48 is that the number one police call? We've been there for a variety of problems over the years. So have you seen that big truck up there, that Nair truck? Yeah, there's different. There's a weight limit on what trucks can be on the street, and we can come out down and look at it tomorrow. Okay, they're great. You know, they're big trucks. They're not like a little <coughs> heavy van or something. Yeah, these are big things. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, Would anyone else like to address council on the budget issue or anything else? That they have? <laughs> I would just like to add that I, I actually, my parents uh, built our home on Hollywoods in 1970. It was a beautiful street with expensive properties, and the apartments at the top of the street were for single or uh, couples, and it was lovely. And I believe it's pro and. My husband and I bought our first home on Fairfield in 1982 when we were married. We bought, purchased my parents' homes on Hollywood in 1985. It was still a beautiful community. We paid three times on Hollywood's what we paid in the Central Business District. So it was a valuable street. And I suspect, I'm not an expert, but it's probably one of the few uh, streets in Fort Thomas which have deteriorated. I think departments have something to do with it. I don't know what can be done with about that. But I do believe that council and the city can do better than it has for that southern co corridor, which I would say runs from um, Woodville to the very end of Fort Thomas to improve and make it aesthetically more um, pleasing because it's not fair to the people. All the people who are <coughs> residents on Fort Thomas maintain their homes, they maintain their yards, they do their best. But it's unfortunate that what has happened in the southern end, and particularly those communities. Also, there was an IGA and a Frisch's. Those were friendly uh, businesses that served that community as well as probably Fort Thomas. The engineering company, it's aesthetically acceptable, but it 
the parking is out of hand. It was not entirely full when it was developed, and now it is, and they are parking all over. And the U-Haul is certainly not an improvement to that area of town compared to the restaurants. And the restaurants, even the Mexican restaurant, was maintained far better than the U-Haul is. So thank you again for listening. Sure. Anybody else like to address council? Yes, yes. sir. <coughs> it's safety budget here. <laughs> okay. I have no problem being up here. Mrs. Hamill taught me well. Yeah. <laughs> Name and address, please, for the record. Rob Gagline, mm -hmm. 108 Waterworks. Okay. And I'm Scott Harden. I'm at uh, 133 Hartway, right on the corner of Waterworks. Okay. Uh, living there, we've somewhat discovered somewhat of a pedestrian um, resident safety issue. Okay. Uh, the little connector street from Memorial Parkway to the Avenue. All right. Um, it seems to be the racetrack for a lot of cars coming through there. Um, so we see it as a safety issue. And uh, I've got some handouts here for you. However you want to pass them on. Go along with me. Did you see the Iowa Waterworks, the Sadie, Court Parkway, and uh, traffic control request? The uh, first first page, you'll see uh, where we're talking about. Uh, you see Waterworks um, at Memorial Parkway. There are no traffic signs, no signage. Um, Waterworks Memorial, as you walk around, you're seeing the four corners, so to speak. And do you have an extra one of those for the chief? I have made enough, but I expected, you know, six or seven, sorry. Sorry. I just thought he might be interested. <laughs> I hope so. What we encounter here is um, not only do we recognize that the kids that are going up to um, Highlands, they have to cross their Hartwig and, um, and Sadie Court. There's no crosswalk. There's nothing there. Um, I guess if they wanted to be real safe, they'd walk up to the avenue and cross and then come back down to Memorial. There's no sidewalk on the right side. So if they're coming out of Hartwig going right, there's no sidewalk. So they have to cross. Um, as far as me personally, um, parking is kind of sketchy there, so I have to park across the street from my home. So in doing so, I have to look both ways two or three times to make sure someone's not flying that. It doesn't matter if I'm walking across the street. They don't slow down. I actually said to one person, slow down. And they said to me, it's 25 mile an hour speed limit. Well, when there's a pedestrian, a dog, or something, probably a raccoon, a squirrel, they're going to slow down. But they're not slowing down for me. So I got to get in the car real quick, close the door, because somebody's going to come take my door off. Um, so then, as, as an example, did you want to speak to No, I was just going to say that uh, since the speed limit is 35 on the parkway, on Memorial Parkway, yeah. they come 35 off of that. And since uh, the road's at an angle, I don't know who's familiar with who it is, but if you're coming from 471, it, it, they just whip right on there. And I've actually gone so far to ask a guy politely. I had my teenage daughter with me. Hey, you know, do you understand that you were just flying up the street and you just about took us out? And he gave me the FU and went back into his house. And he lives up on Miami Parkway. Uh, nice house, nice neighborhood, you know, but he goes by us and he, he doesn't care. They're complete disregard with everybody who flies up and down the street. My parents were turning left into Hartwig and somebody actually, they had the turn, turn signal on, were making the left, somebody was coming down Hartwig. They tried to go around them while they were turning and about T-boned them. Mm -hmm. And our neighbor, Susan, yes. who lives next to me across from Rob, same thing. She lives the first house. She tried to go left. Somebody whipped around her. So they're trying to go so fast up to Miami and all the other parkways up in there that they're disregarding everything. So that's the you. first thing that Susan, when I moved in, that's the first thing she told me. Yeah. She said, be careful of the traffic. OK. I said, well, what happened? And she said the exact same thing. She was coming off Memorial, trying to make the turn, 
they cut that corner short, and you start to see the paint being worn off because they're cutting it real short. It's in an odd angle, it's in an acute angle. So what they're doing is they're cutting it short. And they're just flying. And they are flying. And they don't want to slow down. And it's, it's all genders, it's all ages. Um, as you go to the next page, you'll see um, where they have actually moved the sign. It's just, a, it's just pointing out the dangerous intersection here yeah. because people, people are running the stop sign at Hartwig, not able to see that and going through that, uh, also causing some issues there. And you'll see uh, examples of where there is traffic control. And I don't know if I need to go through each one of them, but there are very similar streets. Scott went and canvassed the neighborhood, the city, and found identical situations where there's plenty of signage. Claimy Crest coming off of Grand is the same scenario. Everybody coming 35 up Grand will run up Claim Crest, but it's posted. Um, it's it's uh, done fairly well. There's crosswalks. I don't think there's the same issues. Um, if you've ever driven up West Southgate from the Mora Parkway, it was obviously a problem at one point, and somebody did some major work. Speed, speed humps, 20 mile an hour, children at play. Every single pole up and down Southgate has a sign on it to slow people down. So everybody's now directed at waterworks, which goes past us. So you, it's, it's fine to fix one problem, but created another. We have Johnson Elementary on one end, and all the kids go to Highlands on the other end. And everybody goes up and down Hartway to Sadie, and like he said, there's no sidewalks on that entire side of Waterworks, so they have to cross there, and it's pretty scary. I have four children, all teenagers and under, and uh, it's pretty crazy right there. And when people are telling you to, you know, F you because you asked them to be nice and you know polite. But if you did it in their side of town, if you went flying through their part of town, they would they would have a fit. So it's uh, it's just become a real safety hazard. So my daughter lives on Tremont, and they put up signs to say "Drive like your children yes. live on this street." Yeah, I'm not going to spend the money. I'm not going to canvas the street and ask who would like to pitch in and buy a couple signs. It's ridiculous. That is out of control, and we'd like your attention. Please. Please. Absolutely. Are you Thanks saying there's no crosswalk? There's, there's a crosswalk painted on Memorial Parkway. At Memorial, there at is. Memorial. Okay, but and then there's not in, one up in between. At the two, Hartway. Yes. Oh, at Hartway. Hartway and Sadie, there's, but there's no, no sidewalks. There. There's no sidewalks anywhere, but anybody coming down Hartway on either side has to cross to go either way. To Memorial get to a sidewalk. Oh, or so so if you're coming down Hartway, there's no crosswalk to get across. Um, right. So and anybody, there's no sidewalk just to make a turn to yeah. go down to that crosswalk that you're familiar with. Yeah. So they can't go down or up to hit either sidewalk, uh, to hit either street on the sidewalk. So they have to cross there, and that's where everybody's yeah, coming. Not having a sidewalk, there's a problem. Yeah, and it's a, it's a bad place for a sidewalk just because of the hill. I mean, it's the old golf course. It's a, it is a, I mean, it's built way up. So I understand no sidewalks, definitely not asking for anything like that, just for the kids to be able to safely cross there, whether, you know, uh, ideally would be a stop sign at the four-way, probably not, you know. Would you I, also advocate a speed reduction from 25? Definitely. That would be, that would be a really good I'd like start. to see it at 15. There's just, well, and you start Because Southgate if you put 20, 15. sorry. No, you start Southgate, the first sign says 15. Children playing and all that kind yeah. of stuff. That conversation's been happening a lot lately. We've been having it in committee meetings and so on about it's 25 unless otherwise posted and, and it's discretionary on the city's part to reduce some of these. And so trying to figure out the process to make it happen would be a good thing. This is just one of those <clears throat> convenient cut throughs for anybody that lives mm -hmm. north of the, the avenue. I think you all know how much real estate there is on the, on, on the east side of uh, the avenue. North for Thomas. And, and everything comes up. It's all coming waterworks. up through there. Everybody yep. comes up waterworks. And since Rob Roy is a one way, everybody that goes up that way comes back come down up, yeah. waterworks. And so everything's funneled there. And nobody's going to go up and down Southgate anymore because with parking and speed humps and everything else, everybody avoids it. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, that intersection was reconfigured, what, not that long ago. To stop, to, you know, that turn was made more right angle so people wouldn't fly around there like that. No, it yeah. doesn't slow them down. Did, 
Did oh, it's it slowed get down compared to what it used yeah, to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was probably before you lived there. But it was. Yeah. Yeah. That was. It's been. It's been. That was a huge, wide. I mean, that was open that one. And, and uh, we had another citizen came to us and suggested that <laughs> that street was in really disrepair. It kind of had fallen through the cracks. And when we looked at resurfacing it, um, these guys came up with a great discovery. Let's let's bend that thing. Let's offset it so we don't have all that cross traffic and don't have people zooming at that angle. So there was an attempt. Now, obviously, according to you all, it's not. It, it well, hasn't well, been well, effective, is, and we can do that. We can we can look at it. Again. That is a situation because as you come down um, Waterworks and you want to turn left. Okay. Okay. So now you're kind of. Creeping out so you can see, yep. and you got to think that well, somebody's going to come and pop me in the front end, or they're going to get awful close. I mean, they come close; they really come close. And I'm trying to scoot out because I, I go up to inverse, and I turn and come back down, oh, okay. park on the right side. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so therefore, if I want to go back up the avenue or up Memorial, I got to make that left, and I'm creeping, creeping, looking, creeping, looking, creeping, creeping. It's like. Really? And all I can think of is Susan almost getting whopped. You know, it's yeah. like, come on. Well, this, this weekend, Rob, I hadn't told you yet. Uh, this past weekend, my wife and I were out in the backyard, and I can see the crosswalk at Memorial Parkway and, and Waterworks. An older gentleman was crossing the crosswalk, and somebody came down and Basically, he said, hey, I'm walking here, and they said, you know, cussed up a storm, and they took off and did not let him cross. So I think it speaks to, um, obviously, there's a people problem, and we all know this, especially when you have kids. We all know there's a people problem. So we think that the signage and the, and the posting those things maybe bring it to their attention a little more to pay that to pay that extra bit of attention because there's there's no not care anymore so we have to tell people how to care for people uh, unfortunately right uh, right so that's that's kind of where i where i feel we should be doing something to better make them aware absolutely i appreciate you bringing this to our okay. attention because you know you guys live there you're experiencing it every day and it's amazing when we do street, street improvements every year and we send out the notices and a lot of times this room will fill up we get more good information from the citizens who live in that area about you know water problems on the street or this gutter is not working or whatever all that is so helpful to us so you all coming here and sharing this with us is very helpful we will certainly look at it and see if there's ways we can make improvements but some, like you said a lot of it's a people problem we, we can make an attempt yeah. and see if we can figure out a way to improve the situation and minimize the 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 crazy people who don't like to you know everybody waits to the last minute to leave and then they drive like crazy yeah. to get wherever they're going and it's, it's uh so i'm trying to raise those four kids to respect other people and all this stuff and then right. I, they, they're like dad why'd they do that well that's they, that's that respect that, that's what you don't want to do right. yeah so yeah. and like i said my daughter will be 18 soon that i had with me when i went up to this guy uh, and his convertible came v8 came racing up the street and i asked nicely i didn't cuss him out i pulled up to him i said hey can i you know do you know what the speed limit is can you can you tell me that you know that was considerate or even you know whatever he did you know, you and went in the house so you know it's one of those kind of things i'd love to retaliate on the guy but i won't do that right uh, road rage not, doesn't it, do, it doesn't anything. do anything you know yeah. so uh, any questions again thank you this is very helpful this kind of information helps us figure out what we can do to help improve the situation so thanks for your time thanks for coming appreciate it was there a budget question in there no it's just, okay. <laughs> we'll have to budget something for the sign the sign okay good good that was as big as tonight yeah <laughs> and and there is a little bit of uh the waterworks came and blew the the surface up this weekend on the, while they're doing a hydrant test so um, you can get them to repay while you're at it so That's maybe push this cost off <laughs> did you see that <laughs> they, they you know they have the hitch thing that turned down they blew a whole layer off and it's kind of like you guys don't know <laughs> so maybe you'll get them to repave that street for you <laughs> that seems like a given doesn't it <laughs> Make sure ours was a given. well yes of course, of course. Thank, thank you yes. very much thank, thank you thanks right. anyone else all right well we will um close out the 
public <coughs> hearing on the budget and move to council meeting since we kind of did that anyway. <laughs> so we'll call the council meeting to order and ask for a roll call. Mr. Cameron is absent. Mr. Bowman? Here. Mr. Kelly? Here. Mr. Beasles? Here. Mr. Pierman? Here. Mr. Slott? And is that when we do the pledge? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> pledge the flag. You know, Everything's all backwards today. Us. Okay. Yeah, we're doing this backwards. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the May 21st meeting. I'll move to approve. Second. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. We are to the point in the meeting for visitors and communications, but we've kind of done all that now. So I do have one more. Well, come on up. While we're here, they kind of brought an issue up. I don't know who's in charge of the light at 27 in Hollywood. But we'll come up there. And I, I confronted one of my neighbors. I said, I, I, if I can interrupt you, I, okay. that is a state route. So it would be the Department of Transportation. But if you're having an issue, please share, and we'll be happy to take the message. Okay. Because I, 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 you just top turn left on a red. And he said, well, it sits there for, you know, ever before it'll turn. Uh, so I've been watching. I come up to the street, I get up there to the corner, and I stop. Nothing come. I don't even see a car all the way around the bend out in Hound Heights. Still doesn't. And you wait and you wait. Finally, the <coughs> car comes around, and it goes through, and you're still waiting. Question. How can long does it get? Can we get a just a trip button there instead of whatever timer they I would on? assume that it would hit a trip button, but if it doesn't, that's it, that doesn't make sense. Whatever it is. It can you get by without the light now because of the level of traffic? Probably. Would that be easier or better, or is that could be more dangerous? Well, I think for the people well, that cross, I mean, for, you know, there's actually good sight distance at that location. You yeah, because you can see it far so, south. You know, like so, I said, all the way across the bridge and all the way out past the old Joy Sand, oh, yeah, yeah. and yeah. there's nothing coming, the and we're still waiting, and they're still coming. Through. Through. Some big bushes or something. Yeah. Yeah. Can we borrow that far the stoplight? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's right. You know, and. and Perfect honest, there's a lot of people cross to get on the, the bus on the other side. And it's probably good for the pedestrians to walk in. A lot of them walk over to the cemetery and go up to the Highland Heights City Park. I've seen that too because they've got a park up there. Could it be set up as a crosswalk only and a stop sign for traffic? To, you're talking about a crosswalk on 27? Yeah, where the crosswalk is, there's a crosswalk There's a crosswalk, the crosswalk there now, and it's got a light and everything. You can push so it's got the button. That, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Could they could they use that for the crosswalk, but just put a stop sign at the end and not use it as a traffic signal? Yeah, there, you could put a stop sign at Hollywood. Right. Um, and the, Is that where the crosswalk is, at yeah, Hollywood? Yeah, it's at Hollywood, yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like I said, it's still... It, we were just asking if there's a chance we could get like a just trip button. When you come up, you run over it, <coughs> and it puts it in motion to turn. Yeah, not we'll waiting for we'll, we'll make that turn forever. We'll and, like said, and like I said, I watched it this morning, and there was nothing as far as you could see south. Yeah. And finally, some cars came, and they went through, and then some more cars came around the bend. We're still sitting there, you know. Yeah, I was, that doesn't make sense. I don't normally yeah. turn left. I usually turn right, but it, it's you know. Yeah. I had to run out and make a delivery out that way today and gotcha. take care of a customer, and, and that's what it was. And I just, just wanted to throw it at you, sure. what, how that worked there. Yeah, we'll make that comment. Yeah, it's we'll just figure it out. out. Thank you. Thanks. All right, uh, reports of officers, fire department of the report. Well, uh, this is the uh, first Monday, so we, yeah, we don't have a monthly report. Um, I guess I'm going to go back to... <laughs> Oh, no, actually, you do have something. I do have something so, to bring up, and I so guess Mr. Dill, is it okay now. to do that now? Yes. Okay. Um, Mayor Haas, as, as you well remember, back in, in council, uh, back in February, I mentioned that the uh, ISO office was going to pay us a visit, the insurance service offices, which they do uh, every so often. Uh, and this time, it was it had been a 10-year time frame from 2008 till this year. And what they do when they come is, again, as most of you well know, is they... 
they look at everything from, from our personnel staffing to our equipment uh, to our response times, uh, both our individual response times as well as with mutual aid. Uh, they look at uh, our water flows with Northern Kentucky Water District. Uh, they look at our um, uh, pre-plans of our buildings and our businesses as well as our inspections of our buildings and our businesses and those are a couple of items I'll mention here again in a second you know how much I've been pushing on those so they look at a lot of different things and and uh, currently we're class 3 uh, ISO rating and have been that way for for now probably 15 16 years and so um, you know the gentleman command met with us uh, I, we felt like we had a good report with him um, he uh, had a lot of good comments out of New Jersey, uh, and again, uh, you know, said that uh, you know we went through a lot of different uh, facets of what the department does and how they operate, how we operate, etc. And so, uh, again, as I mentioned, one thing that, that he was very impressed with was our pre-plans of our buildings, and we're at 100%, as I mentioned, even in my annual report, that we're now at 100% on all of our pre-plans on our buildings and working with our mutual aid companies and who's responding and have an X number of personnel which they require ISO does on the scene <coughs> an X number of time and all that kind of thing when we have a working structure fire and then also at, as well as that is our inspections and that's something I've been pushing from day one when I got in here but I've got some gun ho inspectors now through uh, uh, advancement <coughs> I'll just leave it at that and uh, they're doing a great job uh, they're doing a great job right uh, Mr. Bowman? so anyway uh, they're doing good on inspections and uh, we are at, again as I mentioned again the annual report we're at hundred percent there so we we felt like we had a good report with ISO gentleman took the information he said I'm, you know, I'm going back to New Jersey and I'll get back with you probably around September so today in the mail I got a letter actually was addressed to me in a packet of information but the letter actually is addressed to you Mayor Haas and uh, along with a packet of information on our grading uh, scale etc and so as I open that uh, and, and come to you tonight uh, I am uh, very proud to, uh, to mention to council or to tell council that effective September of 2018, Fort Thomas is now going to be a class two ISO rating. That's awesome. And we are very, the ISO in our care is very similar to the accreditation on the police side. Yep. And that speaks volumes. And I am so uh, excited about uh, being a class two uh, ISO rated city now. Uh, you know, class ones are Lexington and Louisville, so we're right there. That's but uh, awesome. anyway, uh, again, I'm real, real proud of that, and I'd like to just take a minute and bring this to you. It's a letter, again, addressed to you uh, in the packet mailed to me, so that's why I opened it. <laughs> and also, just a kind of a breakdown on all, all the grading. I thought you might be interested. And cool. Feel free to share. That's with good. Council. Grading on the system on what they did back in February. And so, again, that goes into effect September 1 of 18. And uh, oh, awesome. Fort Thomas and their residents and our, and our residents uh, will will be able to uh, hopefully get uh, some good uh, numbers with that with insurance uh, as our rating uh, now uh, improves to a class two. So I just wanted to take a minute and, and mention that. That is absolutely Yeah, well, we're, we're all excited. We're all excited. Yeah. What are the other reports? So, Again, thanks. You know, I'll think, pass it uh, on to my staff. I, I think it's important to uh, make public aware of this and also if I you get too. some analysis from some insurance actuarial as to the savings that will be generated by that. People take a lot of this stuff for granted. You know, they don't want to pay any taxes, they don't know what the money goes for. And things like this are an investment. We're, we're upgrading the 911 system, you know, with some serious investment, for example. And, you know, you pay for that, but you get a payback mm -hmm. from these investments, too. Now, good point. Good. Uh, and, and by having top quality personnel like we're able to afford in this city and, and that kind of thing. So um, we, uh, we, we ought to, I guess, give a report as to the return on investment that people get from at least that part of the taxes that they pay. <coughs> That's great. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Good, good Congratulations. Point, Thank great you very job. much. And again, great job. very happy for the city. Thank, that you. Is, Thank you, Mayor Hall. That's Council. exciting. That is exciting. Excellent. Gosh, good stuff. All right. Um, back to the, we don't have monthly reports. Um,
city administrator's report. Actually, I have no, I can't top that. So. Okay. <laughs> Unless anybody needs an update on any of our projects wow. or anything. There you go. Um, then, then we will move. I think I our last meeting, so I think we're good. Okay, but then we will move down to uh, new business. We do have a report of the finance committee on the budget recommendation under new business. Um, can we just read through this? Or? Yeah, um, and then if, if we want to have any conversation, obviously we'll have first reading on the agenda as well. Oh, Roger, you want to do this? Since it's well, it's typically. Oh, 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 our finance committee report. Yeah, yeah. Do that while I go to the bathroom. Gosh, I'm desperate. desperate. Sorry. This is on the budget. Budget recommendation. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess the easiest thing to do would be to read this. Um, we, the undersigned members of the Finance Committee the Council, hereby report that we have met with the City Administration on May 30. Following issues were on the agenda. The committee reviewed and discussed the proposed fiscal year 1819 budget, including all city funds. The Finance Committee is of the opinion that the proposed budget as submitted will enable the city to deliver public services and programs consistent with the current service levels and accomplish broader city policies as established by the Board of Council. It is a recommendation of the Finance Committee that the Board of Council approve the proposed budget. Move forward with the adoption of accordance with the law. And of course, that's why we're having two meetings in June because uh, we need to operate the budget. I mean, we have to have an operating budget by July 1. So, first reading tonight, then uh, adoption in our second meeting in June. Uh, secondly, though, the committee was provided with proposed amendments for the 2017 18 budget. Uh, and it's been our custom to approve these amendments at the same time we approve the budget for the next year and the recommendation is to approve those amendments as well. That's pretty general. Um, so be happy to report, uh, I know that uh, Jeff was at the meeting, the mayor was at the meeting myself, but if there's any questions that anybody else has about uh, budget uh, changes, uh, between last year and the year to come. Be happy to try to address those. Thank you. you of course, there were extensive were bombing not to uh, uh, have the public think that we don't look at this stuff. There was extensive information provided in the council pack that's a very detailed information regarding uh, current year expenditures compared to uh, expenditures proposed for the next year, so um, all that information has, um, you know, been certainly available and thoroughly provided to the council. Well, the only, the only thing I was going to bring up or ask or make note of is last year. I know that when we uh, got to the tax proposals last year, that it was brought up that that four percent property tax increase was assumed in the budget last year and is assumed again this year. Um, I, I don't know if that was any additional discussion or not, but it would make sense to me that you know, we didn't know that going into tax season later on this year. I, I'm in agreement with it, mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to bring out that that's, that's, a, that's there, that's built in and Excuse me. that is a base assumption of this year's budget. Interesting okay. side note to that too that you brought up last year with the property assessment increases that we just went through. I was just talking to Joe about it and there's actually going to be a reduction to offset the increase the rate. in the yeah. property values in that rate. Yeah, I mean, so the process, we have to wait to get the information to set the tax rate from the PVA and, and you know, that varies a lot, but that comes pretty late in the year, you know, quite often just in time to set the rate before the tax bills are sent out. So we really can't even adopt a rate yet because we don't have the information required to do that. But um, good point that the rate uh, will almost certainly be lower than it was last year by law. Uh, we're, you're, you're limited to uh, increasing revenue by 4%. And as a result of that, we will actually have to lower the rate to stay within that legal limit. Uh, I think it's safe to say that, you know, we're facing some serious increases, even though at the very last meeting, uh, the General Assembly uh, gave local governments a break on, on funding and unfunded pension liability. We nevertheless have to pay more into the pension fund because there is, in fact, 
an unfunded liability. It's just going to be paid off over a longer period of time, so it's not devastating to the budget. But it's a serious budget increase, uh, regardless to um, uh, fund our our uh, liabilities to to CERs by statute. We don't have a choice on that. Um, it's, it's probably not a secret to anybody that uh, health care costs will almost certainly go up as well. And so those two things alone, uh, I would guess, are going to eat up any increase in revenue uh, that we'll realize um, when we set the, uh, when, we, when we are able to set the property tax rate. So uh, we, are, we really aren't adding anything, any new programs uh, to the budget. <coughs> Uh, we do have a, a, a salary increase that's based primarily on the negotiated contracts that we have uh, with our, uh, you know, our collective bargaining agreements, and you know, so that's that's it. I don't know, Ron. Is there anything we should add to that? I don't think so. I think you know, we're, was there, were there any assumptions based on the, uh, or any assumptions with respect to uh, the small business taxes that are paid? There was. Not, there was no discussion of any change in those rates. No. Okay. There were estimates based on what Joe thought would come in based on this year's. Uh, it's probably a conservative number. It may come in a little bit higher. We, we never know until you know, we actually get the stuff in, but no change to the rate. Yeah, those aren't as predictable. I mean, it's interesting to hear about this. I didn't realize it was so crowded down at KLH down at that. Yeah. Right. I mean, parking. Bad problem, I really feel for you on that revenue side. Well, they're paying payroll tax, right? So that helps that helps. on the revenue side, but it's not very, it's not as predictable. Obviously, property tax is very predictable because it's just a set of, you know. I would like to address that comment. Uh, some of the people were parking at that engineering on Collywood's park up on the sidewalk. That was brought to someone's attention, and they were told they pay so much property tax we're not going to enforce that uh, parking violation. So I would like, again, council to be aware of that not only do I believe that the budget should be dispersed throughout the city and not um, uh, focused on certain areas of town, I believe that the law should be justly um, administered throughout the town. And if someone is violating their parking, they should be ticketed and told, yeah, regardless I mean, of how much uh, earnings tax. There, there is no exception well, in any of these laws on the basis of well, that I paid Well, I, I, I believe it was someone of authority. Certain. I don't know if it was council or staff or police. But my neighbor, Bob, um, Bill Woods, who lives next door to me on Hollywood's Drive, told me he complained, and that was the answer he got. And I believe my neighbor. <clears throat> I had to pay a $50 fine because my old dog, before he passed away, was barking too much. I didn't get a break at all, so, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, I, I, I'm happy that the city is getting earnings tax, but I, I do not believe, regardless of um, what uh, right. that revenue comes to the city, that um, Absolutely. violations should be. No, um, I mean, those aren't even related. They're, right. they're totally yeah. unrelated. <coughs> the law is the law, and that's... Well, um, I, I will find out from Bill system. Woods who t yeah. he talked to and who told him, but I believe it was someone in authority. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions or whatever about the proposed budget? Well, that's just a recommendation, so I guess we're going to have, well, there's no action on that, right? There's just going to be a first reading. Mm -hmm. Is the reading down here someplace? Yeah. All right. Um, we want to bring up that other issue. So we need to accept the recommendation. Okay. Agree to accept the recommendation. Concur and recommendation. Sure, why not? Well, can't hurt. Go ahead. I'd move to concur and recommendation. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Any other discussion? <laughs> Roll call vote, please. Aye. Mr. Bowden. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Hazel. Aye. Mr. Bowden. Aye. Aye. All right. Any other new business from before council? Did you want to bring up anything on that? You want to have that discussion about the council? Oh, I can I can report from that. Um, just uh, as a follow-up for the committee, we, we did have some discussion in the finance committee <clears throat> regarding um, the compensation for council and mayor. 
Um, we did a, uh, well, we didn't perform it. It's performed um, through the City Managers Association each year. They update. So we do have available information regarding, um, you know, what compensation is offered um, to council members in other cities in Northern Kentucky and to their mayors. Um, and quite frankly, it's, it's a huge disparity <laughs> you know, between the city of Fort Thomas and any neighboring community in, in uh, Northern Kentucky. So we shared that information. Um, it is not something that this council can act on, um, but we did share that information. And I think there was some uh, discussion sent around what, how that process evolves. Um, and it really has to be done in a certain time frame by statute in an election year. That, that, deadline is passed, so it's, it's a little bit of a moot point. It would have to occur before May 1st of, a, of an election year. Um, but it was part of the discussion, so we just wanted to share where that led to. Um, so if, if council and or and the mayors in any future, um, they would have to act on that in the year prior to um, that election year before May 1st. So just wanted to be able to report that to the full council and to the community as well. So two and a half years from now, maybe. Yeah, two and a half years from now, the council may entertain that possibility. Right. But we did not include anything in the budget, obviously, because you all earn your $72 and there, um, you know, your rates are set. So, uh, no adjustment on that. Pardon me. All right. Um, Moving along, uh, Finance Committee report on disbursements. So there's no other new business. Report of disbursements May 19th through May 31st, 2018. General fund $47,190.62. Public Works KDOT fund $12,468.80. Reoccurring debt service fund $1,140.88. CBD revitalization $951.54. Police and Fire Pension Fund, $1,481.57. Total, $63,233.41. We, the underside members of the Finance Committee, recommend that warrants number 3880 through 3946 be approved and the Treasurer be authorized to issue checks for their payment. Mr. Peterman, Chairperson, Ms. Kelly, Member, Mr. B. Bolt, Member. Entertain a motion. To concur. Is there a second? Second. We'll call vote, please. Mr. Bowen? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Reeser? Aye. Mr. Peter? Aye. Mr. Slot? Aye. All right, we're down to ordinances, resolutions, and orders. We have a whole slew of them. <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Uh, this is a summary of ordinance number 006 2018, an ordinance amending the official zoning ordinance of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, being ordinance number 016 2007, enacted on May 21st, 2007. <coughs> Article Section 9.10F, Application of Zoning Regulations to Permit the Placement of a Detached Garage in a Side Yard. The official zoning ordinance is hereby amended by allowing garages to be located in any side yard. Move approval. Second. I'll vote, please. Excuse me. Um, I've, I've reduced on that. I brought the amendment. Okay. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Hazel? Aye. Mr. Peter? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Mm, thank you. Next. Ordinance number 007 2018, an ordinance accepting the recommendation of the Fort Thomas Planning Commission, submitted in its resolution number Z01 2018, and amending the official zoning ordinance of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky. Being ordinance number 013, 2012, by changing the zone or district of real estate here and after described from central, Bus central business district to residential one for 26 Audubon Place. This ordinance changes the zoning classification for 26 Audubon for Thomas, Kentucky. Thank Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Okay. Ordinance number 008, 2018. An ordinance amending the official code of ordinances of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 10, Rules of Construction, Section 10.99 
penalty by changing the penalty clause. This ordinance amends the general penalty. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Friesel? Aye. Mr. Peterman? Aye. Mr. Slot? Aye. Ordinance number 009-2018, an ordinance amending the official zoning ordinance of the City of Fort Thomas, Camel County, Kentucky, Chapter 16, Zoning Ordinance, Section 16.8, Complaints Regarding Violations by Changing the Complaint Clause. This ordinance amends the complaint procedure for zoning code violations. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. Mr. Peterman? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Ordinance 010 2018. <coughs> An ordinance amending the official zoning ordinance of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 16, Zoning Ordinance, Section 16.9, Penalties by Changing the Penalty Clause. This ordinance amends the penalties, amends the penalty for violation of zoning ordinances. Move approval. Second. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. Mr. Peterman? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Ordinance number 011, 2018, an ordinance establishing a penalty clause in the official code of ordinances of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 50, General Provisions, Sections 50.01 through 50.09, Sewers, Stormwater, and Erosion. This ordinance establishes a penalty for violations of Chapter 50. Move approval. Second. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. Mr. Peterman? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. Ordinance 012 2018, an ordinance amending the official code of ordinances of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 51, Garbage, Section 51.99, Penalty by Changing the Penalty Clause. Move for order. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Beasel? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Peterman? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. I'll go too fast. Oh, this is great. Keep it up. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Ordinance number 13, 2018, an ordinance repealing the official code of ordinances of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 95, Health and Safety, Noise Control, Section 95.02B, and amending Section 95.02C, Excessive Growth of Weeds and Grass, Accumulation of Rubbish by Changing the Penalty Clause. This ordinance repeals section 95.02B relating to notice of violation. This ordinance provides for a penalty in regard to excessive growth of weeds, grass, and accumulation of rubbish. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Bowman. Aye. Ms. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Beasel. Aye. Mr. Peter. Aye. Mr. Slaughter. Aye. Ordinance 014, 2018, an ordinance amending the official code of ordinances of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, Chapter 97, Streets and Sidewalks, Section 97.99, News Racks, Penalty by Changing the Penalty Clause. This ordinance provides for a penalty for violation of News Racks Ordinance. Move approval. Okay. Mr. Bowman? Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. 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 Ordinance 015, 2018, an ordinance establishing a penalty clause for Chapter 153 swimming pools by adding Section 153.4 of the Official Code of Ordinances for Thomas, Kentucky. This ordinance establishes a penalty for violation in regard to swimming pools. Aye. Ms. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Weasel? Aye. Mr. Kalen? Aye. Mr. Slaughter? Aye. These are first three. First reading, so no action is necessary. Ordinance number 016, 2018, an ordinance amending a general fund budget for the City of Fort Thomas, Kimmel County, Kentucky, for the fiscal year 7-1-2017 through 6-30-2018 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. This ordinance amends the general fund budget of the City of Fort Thomas for the fiscal year July 1st, 2017 through June 30th, 
ordinance number 017-2018, an ordinance adopting a general fund budget, municipal road aid fund budget, debt service fund budget, tower park enterprise fund budget, capital project CBD fund, and waste disposal fund budget for the city of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, for the fiscal year 7-1-2018 through 6-30-2019 by estimating revenues and resources and appropriating funds for the operation of city government. This ordinance adopts an annual budget for the city for fiscal year July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Ordinance number 018-2018, an ordinance amending the personnel pay and classification plan by unilaterally increasing the official pay table by 3% effective on July 1st, 2018 and amending the compensation ranges for various positions. This ordinance sets forth the personnel pay and classification plan and provides a 3% increase and amends compensation ranges. Ordinance number 019-2018, an ordinance establishing compensation of the employees of the City of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky for the 2018-2019 fiscal year and providing for the manner of paying such compensation. This ordinance sets forth the rates of pay for the 2018-2019 fiscal year for police officers, excluding the police chief for firefighters, excluding the chief, the employees of the General Services Department who are members of AFSCME Local 286, and non-elected officers and non-union employees. Other provisions include, included pertain to the definition of the work week, health insurance compensation based on years of service, educational incentive plans, and overtime compensation. And last thing, <laughs> executive order, EO 9-2018, an executive order providing for and appointing Troy Latart as a green space laborer one for the city of Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky, and fixing his compensation. I got to tell you, I am impressed. You guys did great. I kept my mouth shut, and we got through it a lot faster. That way. You got to do this every year, or I don't repeat everything, and then she will. It doesn't make any sense at all. So, anyway. excellent. Uh, is there any other business to come before council? Then we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Uh, um, I don't see why not.